So I talked about uh, all these things, and uh, let me just kind of uh, remind you of what's going on. Uh, so here is the setup. Uh, and now, now I'm going I'm to start to talk about the proof of Steenrod's theorem. Okay. And it's going to come in with a couple lemmas. Okay, so again, the setup. So we're going to take P, X, Pi, right? And then we had this inclusion of subgroups. So this was a principal G bundle. Uh, and we're going to take this quotient map, and we're going to take go from G prime mod P here, and I'm going to call this thing Q. Okay, and this, this other map that goes down through this whole thing, this is going to be called rho. Okay, and... Uh, what we did was we wanted to look at, at little sections here. Sections. Okay. So uh, first fact. Okay. That we need is that um, this map here, P to Q. Okay. This thing is, uh, so we talked about the Q here. This is a, a, a G prime torsor. So if you think about it, this is this is I'm not going to explain too, this too much, but here, um, what what you're going to have is is you're going to have a, a, a so you can see that this thing has a, has a G prime action, okay? So I'm going to call this PQ when it sits over Q. So here we have this thing, and and the all the G prime orbits go to the same class here since we're actually quotienting, okay? And so uh, this this thing acts. This is actually a free intransitive action. Um, uh, so uh, it's it's a torsor, okay. Um, all right, and so what's actually interesting is that uh, you, we we have this torsor here, okay, this this level here, um, and we can actually compare it, okay. So um, so let me just say the first lemma. Uh, so given a section. Okay, so we have this, again, we have uh, P, the quotient Q. So this is quotient by G prime, X, rho, pi. Okay, so this is the setup here. Given this section, uh, what we'll do is, is uh, this guy here. Well, let's see, this is maybe not the first level that I want to do. Okay, so let's actually not. Let's, let's, let me come back to this one. Okay, the, let me do the first. Here, this is the first lemma I want to do. Okay, so uh, again, so this is the, the setup again. So again, we have a P to X. Okay, this is a quotient by G. Uh, this map was called pi. And then we had Q. And we had this map. Let me call it. Uh, I should have written it more horizontally, but this is fine. Okay, this is Q here. And this thing was defined to be equal to G prime mod P. Okay, so this is a G prime cover. This is a G cover. Um, okay, and so we, we I, I made the comment, so this is a, this thing here is a, is a G bundle, and I made this the comment that you can pull these back. So this is just a map. And so actually, uh, let's call this P over X, you can actually pull this back and to get a G prime bundle on Q. So we can pull it back. Uh, uh, this this bundle here, and so this thing will be a bundle a G on uh, X. Okay. The other thing that I made I made another remark is that um, or sorry a Q here. The other remark that I made is that uh, here this map here this Q map. Uh, so maybe I I can call this thing for, if I go from P Q to Q. Okay, so this is just the map restricted to Q. Okay, so this, I, when, I, when I view P over, over Q, uh, I'm going to call it PQ, and this is going to be a G prime torsor. Okay, so this thing here is a, a, is a G prime torsor over Q. Okay, and then when you have this G prime subgroup, what you can do is you can do that amalgamated product and extend it. And so, uh, so what you can do is you can extend it. Uh, so this is full G cross G prime. 
and then we have this uh, p of q here. Um, and it turns out, okay, this thing here is, so I've extended from g prime to g, so now this lives in bg of q. Okay, so what I can do is I, I have this one, I can extend it to the full group, or I can pull back this one, this, this, this part here to, to q, and it turns out that there's going to be a map from here to here, and that these things are, this is an isomorphism. So phi of g0 p. So uh, here, again, the coordinates, again, are, are p's and, and g0's, and then they're related by this action on the g's, where you can move the g primes over from one side to the other. Uh, well, this thing defined to be equal to uh, g0 of p, and then I take the quotient of p, okay, gives an isomorphism of g prime torsors. Okay, so this is the first thing. It says that uh, when I pull this one back, I can compare it. Okay, so uh, so let me just, let's check some things. Um, so let's check that this map is well-defined. So uh, well-definedness. So maybe this is a proof. Uh, so well-defined. Okay, so um, so what do we need to check? So again, remember that uh, G zero P, this thing is equal to, so this equivalence class is G zero, and then what I can do is I can take a G prime, and then I could do a G prime inverse here, and I need to apply this to P. So again, G acts on P, so G prime acts on P too. And I, here I'm doing it at the level of points, so if I'm working with sheaves, everything's okay. Okay, so I need to make sure that this map is the same thing here. And so remember, we defined the map like this, here, this, this guy here. Um, and so let's, let's check it out. So phi of g0, g prime, and then we have g prime inverse p. So now I'm just going to apply the definition. So the definition said, we multiply these two together. So I, I act on the left here and put it here, and then I take the quotient. So I apply this down here, okay? And that's and we have to make sure that this this all uh, makes sense. So here again, this pull. So we're we're mapping here, okay? And this thing is really just a fiber product, right? So this thing is really uh, p of x cross, and then we're we're doing it over x with q. Okay, so this is going to be the element of Q here. So we're doing each 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 of these components, uh, you know, separately. Okay, so uh, this is why this is actually a map to where it says it's going. Um, and so this is uh, so now what do we do? We do do we do uh, G zero? So we do G zero, uh, G prime, uh, G prime inverse P. So I just multiply this one and this one. And now uh, now we we take Q of the other part, so g prime inverse p. Okay, so here, these cancel, okay? And here, the, the map, this map was a quotient by g, g prime, so it's g prime equivariant. So this thing will actually be the same, so this is gonna be g zero p, and this will be a q a p. And this was actually the definition of uh, phi of g zero p. Okay, so that shows that, that this map is well-defined. Uh, now, uh, in order to show that we have an isomorphism of, of G bundles, we need to check that it is a G map. Okay, so we need to make sure that, that it's equivariant with respect to the G action. So what we'll do is we'll take G, okay, and as I said before, there's, a, the, there's an action here of, of G on, on this, this, uh, this amalgamated product. And what it does is, is the, the action... Uh, just multiplies on the inside here, okay? And, uh, and so now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, to apply the definition. So uh, I'm going to go up a little bit, and then I'm going to come back down here. So uh, then this thing here is uh, G, uh, G0, P, uh, Q of P, like so. Uh, okay, so this was the, the definition that we had. And, um, and as it turns out, this guy here, this is the action on uh, the, the pullback. So the pullback acts through G. So we have G dot. So I guess this is maybe one of the things I didn't tell you. Maybe I'll say it now. Okay. And so this is equal to G dot phi of G zero 
uh, p. Okay, and so what I didn't tell you, I guess, is that uh, when when we have this this thing and we pull it back, the g prime action will act on this side here, through through this guy here, and the g prime action acts through this guy here. Um, all right. Uh, so so now we we show that this map is well defined. We show that it is a morphism of uh, g sets, um, and uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's enough to show an isomorphism. Okay, so if you have two torsors and you show that there's an equivariant map, then they're, they're automatically isomorphic. Um, so let me, let, me, uh, let me just remind you, uh, so, so I just want to give you a reminder real quick. Um, uh, so uh, so I, I just wanted to show you something else about these amalgamated products before I go on to the next thing. Uh, G prime uh, P. So if I take this map, uh, I, I just want to say that this map is a, a is a left invariant or um, uh, a left G prime map. Okay. Uh, so th this is kind of a, a, a nice exercise. So here J of P prime. So this is going to be an element of here is going to define to be equal to one G P prime. So we take this amalgamated product. And uh, I can actually stick this in here. This thing has a G action, this G prime action, this thing has a G prime action, and this thing's all okay. Okay, so uh, let's, let's actually check that it's all okay. Uh, so when we take G prime dotted with P prime, okay, so if I stick this in here, uh, so this is gonna be, well, one G, and then I do G prime P prime. And as I said that you can move this over, okay, you get to move this for free. Uh, so, so this is the definition of the amalgamated product. Uh, and so this becomes G prime. And then I, then I told you about the action of G on this side just acts through here. Okay, this is what I circled uh, here. Okay, so uh, we have that and uh, this goes away. So this is this. And then, then we have G prime dot J of P. Okay, so this is... Um, this, this tells you that this map is, is a left equivariant. Um, I wanted to give you some, uh, so, okay, so I just wanted to talk about amalgamated products a little bit. Okay, and now I'm gonna say some comments about this proof here, and another, another thing about amalgamated products. So, um, so I just wanted to say that there, there's a lot of potential confusion. Uh, confusion. Okay, so first of all, uh, the action uh, the action, okay, so, so when you're going back to this, so the defi in the definition of uh, the amalgamated product, uh, you could consider two things. You could consider G, G prime like this, or you could consider um, P, G prime, G. So there's kind of two conventions, and this choice is pretty arbitrary. Uh, I've been working with this one. Even when you're within this one, when you're within this one, there's there's uh, two possible actions. So there's an alternative action. Uh, the the action that I uh, I'm using right now is where G prime just acts uh, here on on this component uh, uh, in a in a straightforward way. So there's this alternative action uh, where you could take uh, a a the left action of the of an so the associated left action of a right action. So what I mean by this is that. I have this this guy here that lives in um, say uh, this 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 piece here. So we have a G and we have a P. Okay, and this there's the equivalence relation, and I could define this action. I could define another left action by acting on the right here. Okay, and uh, it, it this is a, a totally valid action, um, but it's it's kind of weird. Okay, um, again there's so so, but we we don't use this so. The, this this uh, messes things up. So it's a good exercise to, to see how these things mess up. Okay, um, there's also, you could also try and define phi in, in different ways, okay? So you could define, um, okay, so there's, there's a map where you could define uh, G, P, this could map to say, uh, here this could be G zero inverse P, QP. Okay, this would be one possible map you could you could try to define, or you could define a map like G zero P. So I multiply them, QP. Okay, so if you do this, um, there's kind of two things you can, and then there's two steps in this, and then 
there was this uh, well-definedness and then you wanted to check that it was a GMAP. So when we go back to this proof here, right, I, I took this map and then I checked this well-definedness and then I checked that this was an equivariant map. Well, um, in this setup, the action I, is okay and this is, this is bad, okay? So the, the well-definedness won't hold. And if you do this setup, this will be bad and then this one will be uh, uh, okay here. Um, and so I guess, uh, okay, and that, that's, that's uh, all I wanted to say about this. Um, let's see. So I, I guess this is with, um, this is with the, the weird uh, G action here. So this is uh, with, uh, with this funky action here. You can try and do it like so. And if you do it with the funky action, then uh, both of these will, will not turn out well. Notice that this one without this function, funky action is completely okay because uh, that's actually what we used. This was this, the same definition uh, uh, here. Okay, the circled thing. Okay, so we had our first lemma. Okay, let me remind you what our first lemma said. Our first lemma said, oops, our first lemma said that, um, so we have this bundle here and if we, we pull it back, Okay, it's the same thing as taking this G prime bundle and extending the, the uh, doing an extension of the structure group. Okay, uh, so from this we can get kind of the, the more interesting lemma. Um, and so this is kind of the next part in uh, uh, of the uh, Steenrod theorem. And it says essentially that sections of, uh, of Q uh, give uh, reductions, so reductions of the structure group. Okay, so we again, so so this is saying that uh, so for we can take here uh, x q. So this is a, a section here. So this is again. Uh, let me let me maybe uh, uh, draw the picture again. So we have uh, x. We have. Uh, Let's see, how do I want to do this? Okay, let's do it like this. Uh, we have x, oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> x is not there. That's why I'm getting confused. Uh, so we have a, mm, let's go over here. Okay, so we have p, okay, uh, and then it goes to q, okay, and so q was again g prime mod p. So again, by definition, or by construction, this was a g prime torsor. So this is a g prime cover, this is a quotient. And then we have, um, uh, this guy goes to x here, but we could look at a section here, and so we have this torsor here. So let's call it PQ, and uh, so this this S can map to the pullback of PQ here, and this thing here will will actually be uh, so we'll take this thing. This is a G prime bundle, and it goes on x since we've pulled it back from Q here, um, and it turns out that uh, this is a reduction, okay? Uh, this thing is, so uh, So we have this here. So it turns out that uh, this guy here uh, is a reduction of, uh, of P. So again, we're starting with a P, which is a principal G bundle on, uh, on X. Okay, so again, uh, w what do we need for a reduction? Um, so we need to show that, so reductions were two things, okay? Uh, we needed this guy here, so this was a, a, a BG bundle, so this is a, so a BG prime, G prime of, uh, of X, and then uh, phi of S uh, was this amalgamated product, so, that, so what do we do? We take G, we extend the, the the structure group of this guy, okay, and we need to show this is an isomorphism, so then we need to show this is an isomorphism of G torsors. So, okay, so we had these these two components of, of what it was to be uh, a reduction. Okay, so um, let me show you the proof, or slash construction. Okay, and so uh, it's it's actually not so bad. So here you take p of x. So this is just this is the principal homogeneous space uh, with the the g the g g tors are over x, and um, 
So this is just really the identity, uh, and we can pull back the identity here. Uh, but the, the clever part about this is that I can rewrite the identity, okay, since, since uh, S was a section here, this was this map row, and this was this map pi. So if I do this, and I, I do the section, and then I add row, then, uh, then I get the identity back. So this is equal to uh, row composed with uh, uh, S star of P of X. Okay, so one of the things I didn't tell you that this is uh, these these things rotate or they they behave well. So there's an isomorphism here, um, and this thing is actually uh, P Q here. So this thing, when we pull this back, this is this is actually uh, this part here is P Q, and so uh, by the the previous lemma, this is S star of. Okay, so now let's look at what this was. So this is P of X, but actually we're going to do it on Q. Okay, so it's the same space, but I'm, I'm just doing it from uh, X to Q now. So I'm viewing it differently. Oh, uh, and let's look at the, what the previous lemma said. The previous lemma, where is it? Okay, here it is. The previous lemma is this, okay? It said that when we pull back, oh, I guess we just need, we're actually pulling back row X. So I guess I didn't need to change the way we viewed it. Okay, so when we pull back, it's actually isomorphic to this, this push out by PQ. Okay, or this, the, the extension of the structure group. Okay, so, sorry, this is an X here. This is an X here. And then here we have um, P, oh, so let's extend the structure group. So by the theorem, so this is from the previous lemma. Um, this is G, and then we extended the structure group of here we did and we had PQ okay so now we're pulling back this and actually what from what I said before that when you have this pullback it distributes so this is going to be G cross G prime of uh, P uh, sorry S star PQ like so okay and um, and so okay so I, I showed now I have this thing and, and so what's the actual isomorphism here so this thing is the the uh, the G prime bundle here. So so maybe you, you this this thing's the, the the G prime bundle, and um uh and, and we we showed that they're isomorphic. And this phi of s uh, uh this thing here is the the what happens when you trace the identity through these isomorphisms here. So that explains what phi of s is. So phi of s comes from, uh, you know, following the identity under these, uh, these natural transformations. All right, so, so now we, we've shown that uh, when you pull back uh, this, 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 this guy here, this bundle, that uh, you actually get a reduction of the structure group. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, um, okay, so let me let me prove something else. Uh, so here's a lemma. The thing that I'm going to prove is that every reduction of uh, p to g prime uh, comes from or is isomorphic to. to uh, uh, one coming from a pullback. A pullback of PQ via um, uh, S in a section here of Q. Again, Q is the quotient. Um, Okay, so so this is this is what I want to show. It's essentially saying that, that these are uh, classes. So let me just make a, a little remark here. I didn't say this yet. I, I meant to. Um, so so if we have uh, P one and P two, uh, so these these let's say P one P two prime P two. Okay, so let's say these are both uh, uh, G prime reductions. So. Uh, so two G prime reductions are isomorphic if and only if uh, as G prime reductions. So I'm going to define like a category of G prime reductions if and only if uh, P1 prime 
is isomorphic to P2 prime as um, elements of uh, B G prime over X. So as as G prime torsors. Okay, so all you need to show is, is a G prime equivariant map. Okay, so this is what it means for them to be like this. So what I'm going to say is that, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some reduction, okay, and then we're going to show that it comes from a pullback. Okay, so um, so let's let, so let's do the proof. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to let P prime phi be a reduction. A reduction. So it's a it's a G prime. So this is a, a G prime torsor over X, and it's a reduction of the of the P torsor. Okay. So um, so what we first need to do is uh, uh, we need to build a section. So build a section of uh, S that goes from S to Q. Okay. So Q again was. G prime mod P, okay, and then there is this row map here, and then S is, okay, so S is here. So we have this, this other projection, and we want to take a section of this projection. Okay, so let's build a section. Um, and how are we going to do this? So we, we I already talked about, um, okay, we, we already talked about this map, so, uh, so I had P prime, okay, and I, I had this G prime equivariant map that I already talked about, so we had G cross G prime, uh, P prime here, uh, and then uh, and then by the definition of a reduction, this is the isomorphism here. Uh, so this map was was talked about. So talked about. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to find this guy here uh, to be this this composition. Um, so this is F V. So what it does is it, it takes uh, P prime, it maps it to a uh, one p prime, and then it maps it again to phi of one p prime. Okay, and I I call this whole thing f phi because it depends on phi, and this thing is a, a g prime equivariant map. So this thing here is a g prime uh, equivariant map. Again, let me just point out where this this first thing was talked about. Um, so let me go all the way back here. Where are we? Here, here. Uh, so this is this is this uh, G prime equivariant map. So here I, I took an action by G prime and I pulled it out. Okay. Okay. So we have this uh, G prime equivariant map, and now what do we do with G prime equivariant maps? Well, we have this thing uh, P prime, and then we had this uh, here. And what we can do is we can take the quotient by G prime. So when, and again, I said, if you have a principal homogeneous space or a, a G prime towards, or you quotient by G prime, you get the base space X. Okay. And then we're going to quotient this one by G prime. This one's Q. And so we get this section here, S sub V. And so S sub V is actually going to be the quotient. So the, the quotient of uh, F sub V by G prime. Okay, so this is how we build a section. So we, we take this map and then we, we do this G prime uh, quotients here, and then we'll, we'll get, we built a section. So that was step one. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this section uh, to do our bidding. Uh, so, uh, so it remains to show, uh, to exhibit uh, some alpha from P prime to this this guy here. Okay, so we had this S phi, and we need to show there's an isomorphism between these two two guys. Um, so again, what do we have? So we have uh, uh, so this thing needs to be uh, uh, so we this needs to be to be a G prime map. Okay, so it needs to be equivariant with respect to G prime because we're, we want to show an isomorphism of G prime torsors, so it's enough to sh give a G prime equivariant map. So let's let's kind of like write out this this diagram again. So uh, P prime here, it goes down to X. Okay, X was G prime mod P prime. Uh, this let's call this quotient map Q prime, uh, and then uh, we had this map here to P Q. So this is uh, F V, um, and there is a quotient here. 
uh, so to, to Q. And Q was equal to G prime mod P. Okay, and here we, we constructed this section here from the quotient. And so, um, so it's kind of clear what happens now. So here we have, it, it looks like a fiber diagram. Okay, and so the fiber, this, so we, we will get a map automatically to this fiber product of these guys here. Okay, and, and it'll factor like this. Okay, so this is the, the fiber product here. Um, and so what is this map here? Um, well, it turns out, well, let, let's talk about what the, the, this guy, it'll turn out this guy will be alpha. Okay, so what is alpha? Alpha is uh, the, the product of these two guys. So uh, alpha is equal to Q prime cross Q of FV. So that's, that's just these two maps. And then um, it turns out that, that if we look at what this, this thing actually is, uh, so uh, this thing is actually the pullback of, uh, by this S phi, so S is S phi, uh, by um, a PQ, okay? So that's just the definition. So we have a map uh, here to, to this guy, and we're wanting to, this guy, it turns out that this guy is S star, PQ of phi, and um, we need to show that uh, th that that this is kind of a, a G equivariance map. So the G equivariance, uh, G prime equivariance. Um, so it turns out that uh, that uh, G prime, the G prime action, uh, comes from. Uh, F phi. Okay, so if you, if we go back here. So here, this is, um, yeah, so the, the G prime action here comes from uh, this, this part here. So, uh, well, actually, it comes from PQ, I should say. It comes from uh, PQ. Okay, and then uh, it turns out that uh, uh, th this, the, the, the F phi is G prime equivariant. Uh, and, and it turns out that alpha is just the base change a base change of F phi. Okay, and so this this these two these things imply that uh, the map alpha is a G prime equivariant. Okay, um, that that's I think that's uh, that's what we wanted to show. Um, uh, that does it. Okay, and now um, now we can we can kind of conclude uh, the the end of Steenrod's theorem. So we we again, what have we shown? So we've shown that um, uh, every uh, so every reduction comes from a pullback, uh, and that uh, uh, that so okay so every reduction comes from a pullback. Uh, and that pullbacks give reductions. Okay, so we first showed pullbacks give reductions, and we showed every reduction comes from a pullback. And then there's this other thing about saying, when are two reductions coming from pullbacks equivalent? So the, the last part of the lemma, the last part of Steenrod's theorem, so this is the last part of Steenrod, uh, is the following. It says that, um, uh, so uh, given two sections, uh, we can pull back this PQ, uh, uh, so as G prime reductions, uh, if and only if uh, S1 and S2 differ uh, by an automorphism of P. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, maybe, maybe if this isn't clear, so uh, the let me just talk about the actions. So before I get into the proof, um, so here again we have uh, here's the setup. We have p. It goes to uh, uh, x here, and uh, uh, maybe this is not the best way. Let me let me. It's more instructive for it like this. So we have p. We go to q here, and then we have this thing goes down to x, and then we can take a section and pull it back. So this section here. This is a G prime action, and we pull it back here. So then we have this S star PQ down like this, okay? And, um, and, and 
okay, so so what what we have here is we have this automorphism group acting here. Okay, and what can happen is you have a section here, and then this this thing is actually p mod g prime. So the the automorphisms also act here, and so they also act on the sections. And what this is saying is that if we have an isomorphism here, then it's necessarily the case that this section is sent to this section by some automorphism acting here. Okay, so uh, let me just talk about the proof now. Okay, so the the okay, so suppose uh, S one is equal to uh, gamma composed with S two. Okay, then it's it's trivial to check that uh, this this implies that uh, well S one star uh, PQ is equal to uh, is isomorphic to S two star PQ almost, almost clearly. So we let's we'll we'll omit this proof. This is the easy part. Okay, so let's do the converse. The converse is the hard part. Okay, so um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the construction from the previous the previous setting where we 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 took. Uh, an arbitrary reduction here, and then we 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 found this section. So there's actually this canonical section here. Uh, we didn't we didn't tell you anything. We, you know we we get the section for free. We do this map, and then we we mod out by g prime, and then it, it pops out a section. Okay. So this is kind of a, a nice thing that happens. Okay. Um, so there's there's really no choices going on here. Um, Okay, so we have this, so the, the thing is, is we're going to start with these things and we're going to use this construction where we pop out this section to show that it's isomorphic, so that these reductions are isomorphic to pullback reductions. And, um, uh, and so, uh, and then we're, we're going to show that the, the, the two pullbacks or the two isomorphic things differ by an automorphism. Okay, so, uh, so we'll take P1 uh, prime and phi1 and uh, P2 prime v2 uh, reductions of p to structure group g prime. Okay, so that the amalgamated product of each of these guys is this. The phi the phi i's will be isomorphisms. Okay, uh, and then we suppose that in addition uh, that uh, so we we're going to suppose in addition that uh, we're having a, a, an isomorphism here, uh, an isomorphism of uh, g prime bundles, g prime torsors. Okay, and um, and so okay. From now, I I, I I need to show that they're they're that okay. So the, the, the okay, I need a little bit more data. So then we need s of phi one and s of phi two, the canonically associated associated um, uh, uh, sections uh, as in the previous lemma. Okay, so again, these are the guys that 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 uh, so that that p p get th these pi primes are isomorphic to um, s phi i uh, pullback of, of of p sub q. Okay, so that that comes from the previous lemma. Okay, so the claim that I want to show is that there exists some gamma uh, in out f and out of p. Okay, and this actually depends on this isomorphism. Uh, alpha here, this isomorphism alpha here, uh, that uh, that that such that uh, this these two sections are going to differ, so by this gamma. Okay, so here's the proof. Uh, so the the first thing we need to do is we need to cook up an automorphism from two sections. So how to cook up an automorphism? Uh, from two sections. Okay, so let me just kind of write this down. Um, so we have this alpha from P1 prime to P2 prime. This is an isomorphism of G prime uh, bundles. Okay, so this is kind of so. So now what we can do is we can take the amalgamated product. P1, and then we have a G cross G prime P2 
prime here. And we apply this functor, so this is alpha, uh, well, g cross g prime alpha, okay? And by, okay, so we, we were also given these phi ones and phi twos here to p, okay? So we have this diagram now where we have this guy, so we, we start with this. We have these two isomorphisms. This is the, the date, this is part of the data of a reduction. And uh, so this gives us here, from this guy, we can chase this backwards, so we can go here to back around, to here to here, okay? And then what we get is we get this gamma, which is actually equal to the composition. Um, well, we take phi one inverse, we compose it with this middle part, so g uh, cross g prime of alpha, and then we compose with uh, phi two. Okay, so we go here, back around, okay? And if you look, it goes from P to P, and so this is gonna be an automorphism. So these are all maps of, of, of G prime, uh, G, G bundle, or uh, principal G bundles, or G, G torsors. And so this is gonna be an automorphism of P as a, as a principal uh, homogeneous space. Okay, so this tells us how to cook up an automorphism from, from uh, the, these, uh, uh, well, well, not two sections, for, but from two um, reductions, reductions, I isomorphic reductions. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so. Now I need to finish uh, and look for my note. Ah, okay. Okay, so, okay, so now um, what do we get? So, so we have, so from this whole thing, okay, this guy uh, is, is this, uh, this, this is a G prime thing, this is where we get the automorphism, but now we can write down a G prime equivariant diagram. So we have this guy here, okay, we have P2 prime, okay, and we had this isomorphism between them. And, and I, I talked about this, this embedding um, into, uh, let's say, P1 prime cross G prime G. And then we have G cross. So this is the amalgamated product. So I'm moving it up. And I had this inclusion here. here. And then uh, we have this, uh, this other map here. So this is a phi uh, 1 and phi two, so this is this, this isomorphism here, P and P, and then I had this alpha, then we, de we just define this gamma of alpha, which makes this whole thing commute. Okay, so this whole diagram is actually uh, G prime equivariant. So this is G prime uh, equivariant. Okay, so now what we can do is we can, we should quotient by G, by, by G prime, and what happens when we quotient by G prime? Well, when we quotient by G prime here and here, these are G prime torsors. So they both turn into a single X. Um, and then, uh, so then I'm just gonna kind of omit what happens here. But here, since they're the same thing, this alpha turns into nothing, okay? And this thing becomes, well, if I quotient by G prime, this is G mod P. So this is equal to uh, Q. Okay, this, this thing is, uh, is P mod uh, G prime as well, okay? And this gamma of alpha turns into the induced action here. And, and this thing here, uh, from our previous construction, are, these are the two sections associated, these are the Q sections associated to uh, these reductions. And, uh, and then this, is, this actually shows that they're related. So uh, maybe that's hopefully I, I wrote this down correctly. So what this is, says is that uh, S1, oh, sorry, S sub phi 1 composed with gamma of alpha bar is equal to S of phi 2. Okay, so that's what this, this says. Um, so hopefully, did I do the... Ah, dang it. Okay, so the gamma is actually on this side. Well, in my, in the way that I did it. Okay, so, um, but it's still the same theorem. Okay. So, so this is how you how you you get these reductions. Okay, so now I showed that they're they're the same thing. So um, again, so let me just refresh you with with what's going on. Um, uh, so there, the, the, again, the statement is uh, the statement. So a little reminder. Okay, so we had uh, 
this guy here to x. You quotient here by this intermediate guy. We have this guy here. And it turns out that sections here, okay, so you have these sections, and this 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 part here, this is P of Q, this is a a, a G prime bundle on Q. Okay, this, this guy here is Q. And what you can do is you can take this section here, and we view this now like this. Q, we have this P of Q, this is a G prime bundle. Okay, and so what you can do now is you can you can take this guy and you can you can pull it back to X. So this gives you uh, this section gives you this this guy here, and this gives you a, a B of um, uh, uh, G prime of X guys. But this is actually a reduction of uh, P to G prime. So uh, a G prime reduction of the structure group, and it turns out that all reductions. modulo isomorphism. So these are in bijection with these sections of this Q thing. So G prime mod P modulo the automorphisms of P. Okay, so when we have two pullbacks and they're the same, they differ by an automorphism by this little argument here. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. I'm, I'm going to try and do a little bit more about when we can actually compute with this. Um, uh, thanks for watching.